Hi, this is Jean Capachin, and thanks for listening in today. I'd like to help provide some insight into cloud services and banking and how we're defining the space. I'll talk a little bit about the transition that is occurring in technology from installed software to more on-demand consumption. We see this as an evolutionary process that has started now and which will continue to be felt throughout the industry over the next decade. First, let me provide some clarification around the elements supporting on-demand computing. And these are definitions that have been developed by our colleagues at IDC. The big buzzword is cloud computing. And although it may sound like hype, this is not a fad that's going to go away, nor is it just the relabeling of shared service centers. Cloud is the term we use to describe solutions that are delivered and consumed in real time over the internet, mostly now for consumers and mass market business processes, but more and more drifting into financial services. There is a further distinction to be made between shared and private clouds. Shared clouds are open to the public, and private clouds are used by a single firm or a closed group of organizations. To further define cloud, solutions must be shared and standardized. So applications that are hosted but are operating on behalf of a single client are not considered cloud or software as a service. Some of the other characteristics include that the solution isn't customized and that the core technology is shared by all users. Also, pricing is in a pay-as-you-go model allowing users to balance usage or value with the price that they're paying. And with capital constraints, this is one of the biggest drivers of the move to on-demand that we're seeing as we talk to our clients. Now let me provide some context and some real-world examples so you can get a better idea of how this works together. First, we have the applications that run in the cloud, software as a service, or SaaS. These are the applications that in the past might have been installed on-premises or run from a hosted site, but which have been architected to run as a service. By this I mean that they're multi-tenant, pricing is based on usage, integration can be achieved using published APIs, and the software is available as a packaged application to many users. Lots of fintech providers are now offering their applications this way. Moving to platform as a service or PaaS, what we're really talking about is SaaS-based application development. The platform consists of the operating system and development tools that IT staff can use to test, develop, and maintain their software. Within the platform are components such as software hosting, development and testing environments, configuration tools, access management, and user authentication. All of these components are delivered over the internet, and one of the biggest advantages is with ge geographically dispersed workforces who can work on the same code set simultaneously. Institutions that are most excited about PaaS are those that do a lot of internal development and customization. And lastly, both the software and the platform are running on cloud infrastructure. The infrastructure includes all the data center elements that you would expect to find. SANS for storage, virtualized servers for computing power, complete disaster recovery services, database administrators, and all the staff to keep everything up and running. What I have on this slide is a schematic of the decision-making process institutions can use as they think about transitioning away from traditional software to SaaS and on-demand technology consumption. When thinking about a shared delivery model, there are certain characteristics that will predispose solutions and institutions one way or another. I would say, though, that this is a very dynamic process, and as time passes, the universe of solutions that are appropriate to on-demand will increase. So let me help you read this slide. The fat bars are what we at IDC call the affinity range for cloud or on-demand deployments. So for instance, looking at the application process section, no surprise that it's more standard applications that are more appropriate for on-demand deployment. So that's why we see things like sales management tools, FX portals, transaction management, compliance policies, and inter internet banking moving to a shared environment. So as you look at what really needs to be in-house and customized and what could work well in a shared on-demand environment, you can use this guide to help your decision making. We see cloud as a real sea change in software deployment and technology consumption. It can provide benefits to banks in reducing some of the risks with traditional software purchase and deployment, but it can also introduce new risks. This will also impact software providers, IT outsourcers, and systems integrators in their business models. 
Thanks for listening, and another great source of information about cloud is the IDC Exchange blog, where you can find the latest from Frank Jens and other IDC analysts that are watching the topic and conducting research. And we'd love to hear from you, too. Please be sure to post your comments and your questions on this blog, and we'll be sure to continue the conversation with you. Thanks for your time.